What's up boys? Welcome back to another video. As promised, today I'll be teaching you guys a safe TVT opener. Last week we did the safe TVP opener and now we're going to be looking at the matchup against Terran. Um, now, personally, I think early game TVT is very complicated. So, a lot of times when I listen to you guys use builders and when I try different builders myself, it feels really difficult to get a builder going that's like good against everything. Uh, like whenever I do something else, uh, I will always get behind against builders. But I do have one build that I've noticed that is, it's probably the best builder right now, to be honest. Like it might not, not necessarily always get you in a great spot, but I do feel like it's pretty safe against everything. Uh, it's definitely my favorite builder that I've seen amazing players like Kier spam it over and over as well. So I'm going to teach you guys that today. And hopefully this time I won't forget about the, the gas cut timings. Anyway, we're going to start off with a barracks first. Uh, followed by a gas. Obviously, we're going to play a double gas here. Um, it's probably the only way to really be safe in TVT, which means you will get hopefully a gas. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's a little bit late, like 20 minerals late, I believe. Uh, so you go 16 barracks, 17, 16 barracks, 16 gas, 17 gas. Then the perfect scout timing is actually uh, to rally your 17th out. Now, here I'm actually going to forget it for a little bit. My bad. Though, I do, I do want to say... Uh, on the new maps, all of those maps are actually enormous. So on a map like this, Glittering Ashes, you might even want to send it out earlier. And I'm going to explain that to you why in a little bit. Uh, but for now, it's just going to be a super standard double gas opener. So you get the barracks first and then the double gas. Uh, do not make the mistake of doing a gas first, by the way. Like, I feel like if you think about one base openers, going gas first just sounds very logical. But uh, no, you actually do open with the barracks first. Now, there are some basic building positioning I also want to teach you guys. Uh, one of them is, is that, uh, for example, here you can see he actually misplaced it a bit. But this is very tempting to do for your add-on. To put the barracks like a little bit to the left, um, so you can fit the add-on in the wall. But since TVT has so many mind games, it's actually really good to no matter what, put your barracks here. Now, obviously in this position, you would always put your barracks here because you can make the reactor here. But even if you spawn on this side, it's really nice to put your barracks in the wall just because it adds to mind games. Like if the barracks is in the wall, even if you're on one base, because you would think, oh no, it's obviously a one base opener then, right? If you see a wall anyway. But actually, there's a lot of builds you can do with a fast wall off and the mind games are insane. For example, you could play a 2x Reaper in your own base. You could make one barracks here and one barracks proxied. You could even play Reaper expand. Like I, on this map, if you make the CC here, you can probably see it from there. Uh, but if you make the CC here, for example, with a wall off, you still wouldn't know. So there's actually a lot of mind games you can do. So just for the sake of mind games, I would recommend you always build the barracks in your wall. Then right after the barracks is finished, you would uh, make the depot in the wall, of course, as well. Uh, and yeah, the build I'm going to teach you guys is Reaper, Reactor, Double Gas, Expand. Um, and a quick summary of the build is basically you have a lot of units. It's a safe build, but it doesn't really sacrifice a lot of economy. Uh, you might get the tech units going a little bit later, but yeah, it's, it's just a really fantastic safe build. Now with the SV, you're going to scout. And I think these days in TVT, you will 80% of the time find that your opponent is on one base as well. Now, this is what uh, I was mentioning about the scout timing. It might be important to do it earlier. Let's say you run into a fast wall off. There's actually, I'm going to pause the video for a bit because, uh, or the replay for a bit, because there's a lot of adaptations you need to do in this moment. Like this is a very crucial timing. Um, let's pretend he walled off and you don't know what it is. Then one really important thing you have to do is scout for the proxy barracks. So you check around a bit with the Reaper. Uh, and normally on a smaller map, you can do a 17 SCV scout. On this, on this map that is really huge, you might want to do 16. You can send your SCV to one proxy location and your Reaper to the other. So a good way to scout here, for example, would be to send your SCV here to scout this area and send your Reaper to scout around here. Now, in this case, since my SV was so late, I actually didn't uh, bother to scout for it. Or no, what actually happened here is that he didn't wall off, so I saw it. Uh, that's what I was talking about with the mind games, by the way. Um, so yeah, he let me in. I knew he was making factory, so I didn't actually have to scout for it. But normally, you do want to check out this part a little bit and this part with the SV, just so you know there's no proxy barracks next to your base, right? Then another thing you could scout is a proxy, right? There's nothing in the Terran's base. Now... This build is one Reaper, then the factory, and then uh, right after the Reaper, you get the reactor. But if you play against a proxy, uh, you actually don't want to make this reactor. Uh, that's pretty much where one situation where this build would not continue as normal. 
Um, and it's it's still a totally fine situation for you. Uh, I do have a very extensive guide on how to play against Proxy Reaper and stuff. If I remember, I'll probably link that in the description. Knowing me, I'll probably forget, but just so you know, I do have that. Like, I'm not going to go super into detail. But anyway, if you do scout a proxy, so there's no barracks here in that case, uh, you would not make the reactor and you would just continue making reapers. Uh, if it's proxy marauder, uh, you would rather make marines instead. The most basic tell, by the way, the difference between proxy reaper and marauder is just the SEV count. Like, if people do proxy reaper, their SEV count is absolutely tragic. Like, you will arrive in their base and they will have, like, like it feels like it's like eight SCVs or something on the minerals. Like it's very little. Uh, and if you don't see a barracks and they do have a decent SCV count, it's probably proxy marauder. Uh, do keep in mind the potential of them just hiding the barracks in the factory, though. Like if you're not completely sure what it is, uh, scout around a little bit. Like for example, one thing that's common to do is that players would build their barracks in a factory here for a mind game. So if you're not completely sure from the first read, j just scout around a little bit more. Like check if you see the factory here. Maybe see the back of the natural. Uh, and that should be that for the proxies. Uh, anyway, assuming you don't see a proxy, the build will just continue like this. You get the one reaper into the reactor, like I said. And then uh, the factory, right? And this is another thing about big maps, by the way. If you scout at the normal time, you actually, ideally, you want your SCV to arrive home at the perfect time to make the command center. Because as you can see here, I think I already queued this SCV, right? So it was I almost got 500 minerals before I put it down. So on a map like this, Probably maybe like Hardwire as well. I know you guys probably might not know the ma the names of the new maps yet. But just on the big maps, probably SV Scout a bit earlier so the timings work out a bit more fluently. So then you get the Hellion going. Uh, you're going to actually wait with the Starport for a bit. Because you're going to make those Reapers first, double Reaper. Uh, and you're going to go towards getting five Reapers and three Hellions. Now I'm going to teach you guys a little bit of early game unit positioning as well. Because it's actually... Like early game TVT is just hard, you know, it's, it's just flipping hard. So the unit positioning, everything matters a lot. Uh, I think the safest unit positioning you can do is actually to keep these units uh, either on the ramp or in any case, a little bit behind. So because you went reactor, it's possible that your opponent has three units already, right? Which would mean they would have Reaper, Reaper, Hellion, and they could hit a little bit before you get your extra units. So this, like if you're confident in your reaction times, uh, personally, I wouldn't be because like even even pro gamers, even I mess up on that a lot. But if you're confident in your reaction times, you can keep your units out here. The best possible uh, place to keep them is actually here. Uh, and the main reason I keep them on the ramp and not behind the command center is exactly because of this move. Now, he kept his units here a little bit late, like he didn't jump in right away. But if your opponent runs in two Reapers instantly, uh, these units would not be finished. In this case, they're finished, but if they go fast, they wouldn't be. And two Reapers, they can actually kill three, four SEVs. And it doesn't sound like a good trade, right? Two Reapers for three, four SEVs. But then a mirror in TVT, where you have exactly the same worker count, if you lose three or four, you're actually like significantly behind. So you never really want those Reapers to jump in instantly. Uh, so that's why you keep these units on the ramp. And it, it sounds like a lot of theory for the first year unit, but this is this is pretty much just early game theory. It's very hard, uh, but once you get these unit patterns right, it's perfect. Then, step two of the unit positioning. Uh, your first two Reapers finish, then these two Reapers are the ones that are going to guard this. When you get two Hellions on the low ground here, you should pretty much be safe. So these first two Reapers, they're going to guard this, and they're also going to deny scouting. Uh, once again, TVT is so many mind games. Uh, and I'm just going to tell you guys over and over. So denying scouting, doing anything that you can, uh, always keeping the Reaper Lash covered, very important stuff. Then at this point, you, I would consider you to be pretty much safe. Um, one thing that you would have to be afraid of uh, is maybe a frontal attack. Like you have two Reapers here and three units here, and they could attack you at the front with five units. So just to be safe, I would still keep your units like on the ramp or like a little bit backwards. Uh, just to be perfectly safe. And then you're going to gear up for your own timing yourself, as you can see. And as always, by the way, I'll put the replay in the description. So if you want to look at all those complicated timings and all that again slowly, uh, make sure to download the replay from there. So this is what you're going to go to. Five Reapers, three Hellions, setting yourself up for a nice attack. One thing that's really nice about this build, by the way, is that this build hits a little bit after like all the backstabs. So if you do, for example, a move out with five units, and two units jump into your main, you're just not going to have anything defend and it's super annoying. But since this, mo this build moves out a little bit later, 
uh, you will actually be ready for all of it and then hit your own timing yourself afterwards. Then, uh, important thing is to actually get your third gas on time. You want your gas to roughly finish at the same time. This one is even a little bit late. Like if this is if this finished at the same time as my CC finished, that would be nice. So this one is actually even maybe like five seconds later or so. Then after you get your five Reapers and three Hellions going, you just start making Marines from this reactor and you make a tech lab. This is actually a small mistake by me. Like you're just supposed to make two tech labs. I'll probably still do it. So yeah, this one is gonna be a little bit delayed, but this is what it looks like. You're gonna make two Marines, tech lab on the factory, tech lab on the starport. Uh, and then you're gonna move out with these units at the same time. Now this, this move out is actually quite important. It's not game deciding, but I personally noticed that in, I would say, 70% of my games, I can actually get damage done with this. I think since he has two Cyclones here, he should probably be fine. One thing I do want to advise you guys on, because I think this is also very unintuitive, is that these kind of units would actually uh, destroy a Cyclone easily. Like, I feel like Cyclone looks like this big scary mech unit, uh, but in reality it dies to like two volleys of this army. Now he does have two Cyclones and he's in a good position. Uh, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna back off and that's totally fine This is not like an all-in or a timing attack uh, by any means um, So just backing off here when you can't do any damage is totally fine though Definitely try to poke a little bit like I do notice a lot of times with these units. I can actually get some damage done for example something common that they could have is like Six or eight Marines some Reapers and some Hellions and you can just throw grenades try to pick up this SUV Throw some more grenades and then if you really have to go you go one thing that's really a sign of you know Bag the frick up is a siege tank around here uh, But just like I said, it's no big deal if you have to run away like it really doesn't matter too much I think here did I kill one? No, I actually didn't kill any SUVs and and I'm fine with it. I think I killed one Marine uh, And that's it and I'm fine with that because this is not an all-in at all then back at home you're looking at a very standard TVT setup. Remember, I told you guys you get two tech labs. You're going to get one Cyclone. Uh, you, you, I was just about to say, I hope I'm not going to make that second Cyclone. The second Cyclone here is actually a mistake. You want to make one Cyclone, uh, and then you just get tanks after that. Very simple. Uh, one Cyclone. Like, honestly, if you're greedy, you can skip it. But I don't really see the reason to. Um, it deals with, like, a, a random Liberator. It deals with a Raven flying in. It's just a super nice defensive unit. You can even get map control with it. I would not really skip this Cyclone. And then at the same time, you're going to get two Ravens. Then these units, you can actually pressure with them as much as you want. You don't really need these at home. Uh, also, one thing you guys might run into is like some kind of base trade scenario. So with these, you might be running out with eight units and maybe you get countered by like a tank drop or something like that. Uh, it's actually pretty good to base trade with these because you have five Reapers. You actually have among the most potential to the damage because you can jump into the main with five reapers right uh, it makes a lot of sense you can circumvent walls and all that so actually base trading with this stuff uh, it's pretty good it's usually a good decision and even against one base builds that is pretty good obviously if you get one base tank column it's uh you might want to adapt a little bit but if you get like for example someone uh, like ziggy it's a ziggy build he would go like this but on one base and with a medevac and then your build is actually pretty good against it because you will just have more economy but the same amount of units. Uh, and yeah, I, re I really think you guys are going to like this build when you try it. It's just going to feel super safe. And after this, you're just going to go for a, a standard transition. You know, the third CC is going to come up after this. Uh, once again, feel free to pressure with this. One move you can also make, by the way, is if you notice your opponent has all the units at the front with your attack, you can also just jump into the main with four Reapers or five if you still have your fifth one alive. Obviously, be careful with that because you don't just want to sacrifice them running into units. But if you do have an opportunity to jump into the main with Reapers, it's actually a fantastic move. Like I said, even getting five SEVs is huge. Like here you can see in the worker count, I'm up by two workers. It should probably be even. Maybe he missed out on two SEVs. But if you could, if I could kill five now, we seven workers up. That's almost game-ending damage in TVT. Like TVT tends to be very scrappy, low eco kind of thing. And when it comes to mid-game unit positioning, by the way, this is pretty much the textbook as well. You always want a Cyclone with a Raven here. It would catch Banshees. Then you always want a tank. As soon as you get it, you want it sieged here. And the thing you would run into the most is something like a Raven dropping auto turrets here. Or maybe Hellions or Reapers trying to run into your natural. And this tank would just shut it all down. And this game, I knew it wasn't Banshee. But if you want to be perfectly safe against Banshee, you would keep all these Marines behind your mineral line over here. 
and then the cyclone with the raven into the main and you're honestly just you know you can't be broken like that basically and that's pretty much perfect unit positioning and sometimes I get questions about the fourth gas timing, but in TVT it's actually very simple. You get the third base when you can afford it. This is pretty much with this build you can afford it after you make your two ravens, like you switch over. Uh, do not if if you run into a scrappy situation with money, like maybe you mismanage a little bit. Do not make the Vikings before the third because Vikings cost so many minerals. Like these two Vikings, that's 300 minerals. If you need to skip them a bit to make the third CC, definitely do that unless you're like being all in or something like that. But yeah, Vikings are hella expensive, so uh, definitely get your third before. And straight after you get your third CC, you start your fourth gas here. Uh, and then you're, you're pretty much set. And to be honest, from this point on, you can freestyle a little bit. My style of playing these days is actually to um, keep pressuring. So instead of adding extra barracks, I will make non-stop units, more tanks, more Vikings. Got a little bit of a supply block here. Uh, so much for the non-stop production, but I really like to not give up any of my production keep making tanks and Vikings uh, And just find openings This is also my standard move out timing by the way two ravens two tanks and on, on new maps you guys might not necessarily know the tank spots But the point of this pretty much is is just to find a really good position on this map You could probably siege here. I don't think you can quite reach that gas so you could only do that if they uh, make buildings here but for example, this is always a good siege location under people's uh, natural. Uh, and that's pretty much what I, I try to do with my move outs, right? Uh, just get annoyed. Like, it's pretty much what TVT is all about, let's be honest. Really annoying siege positions and all that. Um, one tip I can give you is that if you see your opponent has three ravens, I would probably run away. Like three ravens, they have so much utility in the early game. They'll be able to matrix both your tanks or all of your tanks and throw turrets still. So I feel like... It's pretty safe to pressure, you can always siege forward and stuff, but if they have three ravens, I would probably back up and wait to get some more vikings before you push again. Um, if you would want to transition here, by the way, it's totally fine to like cut one viking to add two extra barracks, or cut two vikings to make two barracks and two ebays. Those are totally legitimate playstyles if you want to transition to the macro game a little bit faster. Like as you can see, uh, it's actually a difference between me and my opponent. I've made non-stop unit production, uh, you can see I'm up 14 army supply. Uh, but he has the transition going faster. He has the two barracks and the two eBays here. Uh, so th yeah, these are pretty much the two styles you can play. Oh, also, one quick thing. If you're a mech player, you can totally transition to mech from this. Uh, and I'm not going to do a guide on that transition now because I feel like I haven't figured it out completely how to play mech after that. But my favorite thing to do is as soon as your second Raven finishes, you put the starport on the reactor, right? And then instead of landing the barracks here, I make a second factory here. So you have air control and you can make mass tanks. And that's my my favorite follow-up. I just don't know how to, or I do know how to, but I don't know how to perfectly transition to an actual mech late game. Uh, I might do a guide on that later, but for now, since I haven't quite figured it out, I don't want to show it to you guys yet. I do like to uh, give you guys the real stuff, you know what I mean? So uh, but later when I'm a bit better, I could do that. But for now, uh, that will have to be enough for you guys. Now with the style I play, as you can see, you always want to be out on the map. If you're not transitioning, you should always be moving. His arm is actually very scary because he has three ravens, so I'm not attacking it head on. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, I want to be out on the map. There's going to be a lot of... Don't, don't, don't be afraid to throw scans. Like TVT, if you give away a siege position, uh, you could just die like that. So if you want to throw a scan to see where his army is, feel free to do so. Uh, as you can see, we're both non-stop scanning each other. Sometimes TVT drives me a little bit crazy with all the all the flipping scan sounds over and over. Especially if you play like a late game TVT and you uh, skip through the replay at like 8x, it will just be non-stop scan sounds. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty much what my mid-game TVT looks like. Usually my opponents are a bit more defensive, uh, but he was also aggressive, so it kind of became this weird dance in the middle. And as you can see, even at this point, I haven't quite transitioned yet. I think I should be, I should be doing that now, uh, since I'm finally starting to get money. But yeah, if you want to play like this, you can really keep making units without add-ons for a long time. But you do have to keep pressure on. Uh, if you ever let them, you know, just, just chill, then it basically makes no sense that you're making units all the time. I think ideally, if you want to play the perfect TVT, his style might be a little bit better. Um, to be honest, 
I'm going to recommend you guys one of my other videos as well. It's I think it's called Maru with versus Innovation or like Perfect TVT. I'll also try to link that in the description. Sorry if I forget. But I did analyze Maru's pretty much perfect macro game TVT. So if you really want to play like the theoretically most perfect style, then that's probably what you should do. Um, but for me, this is just kind of my jam. You know, making a lot of units, trying to get positions. Probably smaller, uh, probably better on smaller maps, I would say. Oh, this is actually an important decision, by the way. Uh, let me explain this to you guys real quick as well. Is that normally you kind of want to base trade uh, if you're like too far away, because we were both well on the way on the way to each other's bases. So then you would think it's a silly decision to come back, right? So the reason why I actually came back in this case is because he has three ravens. So let's see where's the unit down. So I have. An insane amount of air control over him. I have I have nine Vikings against two, um, which means that my army is stronger because Vikings are just you know strong army units. But Ravens have an insane amount of utility. So what would happen if I would base trade is that I, he could probably get like enough siege tanks that I can disable them anymore, something like that. Um, and I would have a harder time pushing through, and I would lose units over and over. But with his three Ravens that he got early, he pretty much has perfect utility. So here. He actually made a mistake by walking into my army and walking to my siege tanks a little bit here. He's probably going to lose a tank for that. But in, when the, if, if the Terran would play in a perfect way, he would not lose, lose any units. Sorry for misspeaking a bit. He would not lose any units because of the perfect utility of the Ravens, right? So if your opponent goes three Ravens, you probably want to turn around and fight it head on. And you're going to see it here. Like he has disables, he has turrets. Uh, he could, you know, own my factory production for a while. Actually, not, not the best Raven micro here. But if you look at the pure army size, my army is way bigger because I actually went for those mass Vikings. And that's why it turned around here. If this was a more even game, like let's say we had the same amount of units, same amount of Ravens, same amount of Vikings and stuff, I would probably base trade. But you do not really want to base trade against the utility of more Ravens. Uh, so yeah, there's that. But like I said, the transition after this is still normal. Like no matter when you transition, it's still the same thing. You get two extra barracks, you get the eBays and stuff. Once again, if you really want to look at the perfect TVT, uh, please check out that Maru analysis I did. Um, but yeah, this this video is mostly about this build. I tried to talk a lot about the unit positioning and all that, just so you guys can really get that perfect early game going with this build. Um, but yeah, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, as always, give me some feedback or just tell you guys you love me. I also appreciate that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you guys for the next one. Adios.